Our other video on public relations writing focused on strategy and style, but in this video, I want to really focus on content. Um, in today's world, it's all about generating that content, right? And getting out your message and finding different ways to reach audiences. There are so many different ways. So we're going to spend a few minutes in this video talking about some of the different ways that we can generate content. We're not going to get in depth on, on the techniques behind these things. We're really just going to cover um, what are some of the methods for generating content and, and the channels through which we can reach out using public relations writing. So to start with, we can look at, um, again, some of the, the common public relations writing tasks that we have uh, include things like a news release. Um, so very frequently as a public relations practitioner, you'll be asked to draft news releases. And so one of the things we want to keep in mind in doing news releases is what we call the inverted pyramid, the inverted pyramid. And so we start uh, with the uh, very broadest part of the inverted pyramid. This is just a, a method for specifically the, the content of your um, news releases and the shape that they should take. So we start at the very top, the very first thing that should be in your um, news release and, and using the inverted pyramid are the uh, five W's. Now, remember that people reading this news release and using this news release are going to have a very limited amount of time, not only to review this material sometimes, but also a limited amount of time in which they can discuss these things. So you really want to put these five W's right up front, right up top, who, what, why, when, and where, get the, the, the facts of the situation out very clearly um, right up front. So the very first paragraph of your news release should include all five of the W's, the who, what, where, when, and why, so that people reviewing this news release and using this news release can access that information very, very quickly, right at the very start of the news release. So then after that, you can include some key quotes and supporting facts. That should be the next segment of your news release. You, you're providing a little more depth here, getting beyond just the straight facts of the five W's and into here's some other information that you, that might be useful to this person as they put together their news article or their news report, right? So put together some quotes and supporting facts that they can use um, within their own uh, article and their own writing. And, and then you can add in after that, add some additional, but maybe some less important facts or quotes, things that aren't as directly related to those five W's that may not be quite as useful. But if this is somebody writing a longer form piece, then you can, um, you can include that in there so that they have a little bit more content. Really what you're doing is making their job easier for them in essence, right? You're providing this material to them in levels that they can use. If they only have a very short amount of time, then they have the five W's that they can use. And then you're layering in additional information that they can use as time and space uh, allow in their particular um, format. Then you can also provide some background information, what led up to this situation in general, provide any kind of additional information related to that. And then finally, some general information about your organization or you as an individual and where they can contact you for further details and things like that. But this is what we call the inverted pyramid, right? The five W's start the, the news release and should be right up front. And then you can layer in additional details that they can use. And then finally, some other background information and general information for follow up and and about the organization. So this is a pretty good model to use when you're looking at uh, any kind of news release, uh, because again, it provides the details that the people need and then any subsequent material that, that that might be helpful to them in a format that's easy for them to understand. So think about this in paragraphs. If you have, you know, five paragraphs, then they should include you know, these levels of things or, or, or a little bit beyond that. But you get the idea here. We want to use the inverted pyramid anytime we use any kind of news release. In today's world, we, we can also think about things like digital releases, where we include links to other resources, links to our, our organization's website, an email address that's linked in there. We can provide these digital resources and links and maybe, you know, links to a shared drive or places where these people can go and get further information as well. So don't be afraid if it's being sent in digital format to, to include that type of information and, and use the digital resources that are available. And even more so, we can include multimedia releases where we're including videos where we're providing, again, content, making their job easier. If they're just in the news gathering function, this can make their job easier. For investigative reporters, they want to do their own legwork. They want to do that kind of stuff. But if this is just somebody sitting in a newsroom thinking, I've got to fill X amount of hours a day with some news coverage, then you want to make their job as easy as possible. Hey, here's an audio clip. Here's a video that you can use and you can you can include in your thing. Here's a, here's a link to a website or an interactive 
um, survey or different things like that, whatever it is you can do to make their job easier, you can do that through these multimedia releases as well by providing video content, audio content, um, and you know just uh, making their job as easy as possible while also furthering your message, obviously, and, and promoting your own message. So, so there are all kinds of um, factors and, and types of news releases that we can think about, but all of them should essentially follow the inverted pyramid format and then include whatever kind of resources you have available as well. Another common PR tool for generating content is social media. We can use social media, of course, and, uh, and you know, you need to make choices as an organization about how you're going to use social media, how you're going to engage, what type of tone you're going to use in social media, but it's a very common source of generating content for, for public relations practitioners to use social media anymore. Typically it's, it's free. I mean, it's low cost. It's, it can generate some viral buzz. Um, but you gotta be careful, you know, cause it can also generate negative buzz, but, but some organizations are really quite effective at using social media to enhance their message and to enhance their, the uh, purpose of their organization. So uh, be thinking about how you can generate content and what type of content you want to generate and how you want to use your social media for that organization as well. You should become familiar with organizing and, and writing fact sheets, um, which are just what they sound like. They just provide basic facts on any kind of effort, any kind of campaign, any kind of product, whatever it is, idea that you're trying to get out there. It's just a, a basic fact sheet that you can provide to the public. You can provide to the media um, that has just the essential information uh, on facts about whatever it is your, your campaign is related to. You could also do a backgrounder, which is essentially just a tool to tell your story and tell where, you know, why this effort is important, what this campaign is about, and uh, and and just establishing some background, generating some some knowledge about that organ about that uh, effort and that organization and whatever it is you're trying to to accomplish. So you can you can put together a backgrounder piece for people who don't know anything about um, the effort and to establish that kind of knowledge. You may oftentimes need to generate content through a one-on-one -on -one pitch. <coughs> Excuse me, if you have a, an opportunity to. Um, to have an interview with a particularly relevant um, media member, for example, you may need to uh, think about a one on one pitch for that and generate content for that. Or if you're meeting with a particularly important donator or influencer in that field, then you may consider a one on one pitch and what's going to be best uh, for you to tell your story and to to engage that person in a one on one basis. So you may need to generate content through a more focused one on one pitch. Other times you may have opportunities to do a feature or an op-ed where you are essentially writing the article and, and there's no real third party there. You are, you are providing the content in a whole and generating content by, uh, by offering a fully produced and fully formed feature or, or op-ed piece for um, a media outlet. So um, that's another way that you can generate content. Again, news organizations often have, you know, they have X amount of hours to fill or X amount of space to fill. And sometimes they struggle, especially smaller um, organizations can struggle to fill that space and fill that time. So they may just say, look, if you've got a five minute piece, we can put up here, let's do it. We'll just, we'll just throw it on here because they're desperate for that kind of, you know, that kind of filler. They're trying to fill that time with something different instead of repeating the same thing over and over again. So Especially when you have slower news cycles, organizations may be more and more open to that. So you can generate content through those features and through op-eds. Finally, and through, not finally, but through a media kit. Um, and, and this just collects several of these types of things that we've been looking at and just kind of prepackages it for different media outlets. It may include a fact sheet, a background, or some news releases, some, some op-eds, some features, and just a variety of things that you can include in that media kit and say, here, here's a package. You can pick and choose and use whatever you can from this. And again, you're just making their job easier for them in a sense by providing this information for them and especially providing it in a format that makes it easier for them to use. So we'll go back and review that kind of strategy and style thing and, and make sure that we're meeting those needs for them as well. So they, they don't have to do a lot of repackaging. We're just giving them something they can kind of pick and choose and, and pull out what works for them. And then we can generate content through speech writing. Sometimes as a public relations practitioner, you may not even be the person giving that speech, but it may be that, that you need to write a speech for somebody else. And there are certain things involved in that. Obviously we need to think about content. We generate content through that. And uh, so we need to think about what's our purpose, what's our goal here and, and strategize in that way. But you also have to think about things like who's giving the speech and what is their voice and how can I write this in a way that's going to sound natural 
coming from them. So, so to, oftentimes public relations folks get into a situation where they need to, to be able to write speeches for themselves or for other people in order to generate content in that way and create and, and establish uh, content and tell their story in that way. Regardless of what you're doing with these things, you know, the old, there's a, there's kind of a saying here that, that it takes 10,000 hours to master any craft, right? Whatever it is. And so all of these things feed into that 10,000 hours for you. 10,000 hours to break it down a little bit. That's eight hours a day, five days a week, four to four, 44 weeks a year for five and a half years to generate really an expertise in those things. So we ought to be working at our craft constantly, putting in those hours to get to that 10,000 hours in all of these things in order to become a more effective practitioner in, of public relations by generating content through all the different ways um, that we can. If you have questions about, about writing for public relations or creating content and how to do that effectively, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope you'll think about all the different ways that public relations folks are involved in generating content and all the different ways, uh, you know, not just opportunities that we have to do that as practitioners of public relations, but then all the different skill sets that we also need to develop in order to be effective at all of these ways in which we can generate content as we write for public relations.